This video is about partial derivatives. Let's start with a numerical example. In this example, the wave height h given in this table is a function of the wind speed v in knots and the duration t in hours that the wind has been blowing at this speed. If we want to compute f of 40, 20, that means the wind speed is 40 knots and it's been blowing at that speed for 20 hours, we read down in the table and get 28. I'm not sure exactly what the units are for h here, but we'll just assume that it's 28 feet. Now if we fix the duration at t equals 20 hours, we can look at f of v20 and think of this just as a function of v. We'll call it g of v. So we can ask, what's the approximate value of the derivative dg dv and when v equals 40. Fixing the duration at 20 hours means we're reading down this column. So we want the rate of change of the numbers in this column as v varies. So for example, we can look at these two numbers and look at delta g delta v, which is 40 minus 28 over 50 minus 40, where the 50 minus 40 comes from the change in v. That amounts to 1.2 feet per knot. If instead we look at v values just less than 40, then we're looking at these two numbers, and we can calculate delta g delta v as 28 minus 17 over 40 minus 30, which gives us 1.1 feet per knot. The average of these two numbers is 1.15 feet per knot, and that gives us our best estimate of the rate of change of g, or in other words, the rate of change of f in the v direction when we hold d t fixed at 20 hours. In the next problem, we're asked to do the same thing, but this time we're going to fix the wind speed at 40 knots. That means we're looking across this row. And now we want to think of f with the wind speed fixed just as a function of t. We'll call that k of t and find dk dt, which we can approximate by the change in k over the change in t. If we use these two numbers here, we get the change in k is 31 minus 28, and the corresponding change in t is 30 minus 20. This calculates to 0 0.3 feet per hour. Or we can use these two numbers and get 28 minus 25 divided by 20 minus 15, which gives us 0 0.6 feet per hour. Taking the average, we get 0 0.45 feet per hour as our best estimate of the rate of change of f in the t direction when we fix v at 40. Holding one variable constant and taking the rate of change with respect to the other variable is exactly the idea behind partial derivatives. For a function of two variables, f of x, y, defined near the point a, b, we can define the partial derivatives of f at the point a, b as follows. When we write f sub x, a, b, that means we hold y fixed at b and let x vary and compute the derivative of f of x, b with respect to x when x equals a. In other words, we're computing d, dx of f of x, b thought of as a function of x at x equals a. When we write f sub y of a, b, that means we hold x fixed at a and let y vary. And then we compute the derivative d dy of this function of y, f of a, y, when y equals b. In terms of the limit definitions of derivatives, we have f sub x of a, b is the limit as h goes to 0 of f of a plus h, b, minus f of a, b, over h. That's because we're letting the x variable vary and holding the y variable 
constant at b. If we want to do f sub y of ab, that's the limit as h goes to 0 of f of a b plus h minus f of a b over h because now we're holding x constant at a and letting y vary. Geometrically, when we fix y constant at b and let x vary, that's like intersecting our surface z equals f of x y drawn here with the plane y equals b that's parallel to the x z plane. That intersection gives us a curve which I'll draw here in purple. When we take the partial derivative in the x direction, by definition, that's taking d dx of that curve. And so it means we're taking the slope of the tangent line to that curve at the point where x equals a and y equals b. If instead we're interested in taking the partial derivative in the y direction, that's like taking the derivative d dy of the function where we hold x constant at a and let y vary. So that's the curve that we get by intersecting our surface with the plane where x is fixed at a. In other words, we're taking the derivative of that curve, which is the slope of the tangent line to that curve. Fortunately, computing partial derivatives is pretty straightforward. If we want to compute f sub x, we just think of x as our variable, and we hold all other variables constant. So for this function, f of x, y equals x over y, if we want to compute f sub x at any x, y value, we think of x as our variable, y as our constant, and so that's just 1 over y times 1, or 1 over y. If we want to compute f sub y at any value x, y, we think of y as our variable and x as our constant. Since x over y is the same thing as x times y inverse, we can use the constant multiplication rule to keep the x on the side and the power rule to bring down the negative 1 and write this as y to the negative 2. This simplifies to minus x over y squared. So f sub x, 1, 2, by plugging in 1 for x, 2 for y, I get 1 half, and f sub y at 1, 2 is negative 1 fourth. Let's see if this checks out with our geometric intuition. Here, I've graphed our surface, z equals x over y in green, and I've intersected it with the plane y equals 2. So this curve right here is holding y constant at 2, and as that happens, as we increase in the x direction going this way, our slope does appear to be a positive number. It's tilting up. In this second oddly colored picture, I've taken the same surface and now intersected it with the plane x equals 1. So I'm holding x fixed at 1 and varying y. And then if I go in the positive y direction, that would be going this way, it looks like my surface is tilting downwards with a plausibly slope of negative 1 fourth as the equations predicted. You'll find that there are many different notations for partial derivatives, including the one that we used. This, this partial symbol with the curly d's, we can also talk about if z equals f of x, y, then we sometimes talk about partial z partial x. We can also write f with a subscript of 1 to denote the fact that we're taking the derivative in the direction of the first variable x, or capital D sub 1, or capital D sub f. Of course, there are other corresponding notations for taking derivatives in the y direction. Partial derivatives can also be taken for functions of three or more variables. For example, if we have a function of four variables, f of x, y, z, and w, then we can take the derivative in the z direction, that's the third direction, and that means that we hold x, y, w constant, and we take d, dz of f of 3, 4, z, 7 evaluated when z is 2. In this video, we computed 
partial derivatives by thinking of holding all variables constant except for the specified variable, in this case x.